gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I am going to be reacting to Tool performing Sober live. I am so excited to see this with you. Oh my gosh, I'm a massive fan of Tool. I can remember very clearly the first time I listened to a Tool song. It was in my second year of my vocal degree when we were doing like a metal semester and we had to learn 46 and 2. I just remember thinking this is good. <laughs> They're unbelievable. Ah! The bass line in 46 and 2 is actually also what inspired me to learn bass. So I do owe them a significant amount of my musical joy and expression. Being a fan, I do know the song Sober, but I have never seen this live performance and it's significant because Tool apparently do not let people film their concerts and anything that does get leaked and posted on the internet is usually swiftly taken down. Sometimes bands are so different live, so I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay, let's just go. <laughs> Got new glasses. These ones are a bit thicker because, you know, deterioration. I have astigmatism or something, which means my eyes are not real true balls. I don't know. about this elephant in the room now or shall I say this squat in the room. If you happen to have consumed any media or literature pertaining to a correct posture for singing I can tell you now that this is not the front cover or indeed featured on any pages. <laughs> Our heads are extremely heavy. They weigh approximately 11 pounds which is equivalent to a cat or I suppose a really massive baby. And we have to carry this unusually large newborn baby around on just seven vertebrae. As you can imagine, there is a big muscular support network put in place by, I don't know, whoever designed the human body to support it. Now, when we stand upright, those muscles have a far easier time supporting the head because we are more central. When we do this, Suddenly, some of those muscles have to contract in order to stop the head from kind of just falling. And we don't want to overwork muscles, mainly because if we do, they strain. And if they strain, they hurt. And none of us want to experience pain. Well, no one wants to experience neck pain, specifically. <laughs> that is the general rule. But that's all it is. Scientifically accurate voice pedagogy is still a relatively brand new newborn field. In this exciting realm of ever-changing voice technique advice, my golden rule is if it sounds good and it feels good, it's good. Maynard James Keenan as a human is an absolute unequivocal genius and so when he performs a song that he has written about something in his life, by all means he should perform it in which Whatever way he sees fit and whichever way feels most organic. I've heard the passionate delivery in his voice, but now to actually see it across his face is transcendent. But just because I love voice technique and hypothesizing, I am gonna maybe offer a few suggestions as to why this bending over technique is potentially not as bad as 
one may perceive. In this hunched over position, we aren't engaged in our lats, and usually they give us great support for our rib cage to enable us to belt. But what we have got still is access to our abdominals, so he could be squeezing in his tummy here, folding in this rib cage area to provide some strength and breath support. This will enable me to still drop my internal organs enough to expand my lungs and my ribs to then support them again. We generally don't want to breathe shallow into the chest because it creates quite a hostile and frantic environment for breath and we can't regulate the pressure as well. Now due to the nature of this hunched over position being that there's more attention to the front, this actually might provide him more space here for that very specific forward tilty laryngeal vibrato thing that he does. Also, a lot of his vowels end in er, which again is something quite forward, as opposed to whisper, it is whisper. Because this vowel happens like quite pouty and at the front, generally he wants to send energy there and maybe if he can root down strong enough in his V and kind of lean into the front, it gets that kind of intense resonance that we love about his voice. I'm not in his body so I have no idea how it feels. What I do know is his voice is incredible and he's still performing now almost 30 years after this performance so it is clearly sustainable <laughs> rules are made to be broken there is no textbook way to express yourself and authentic expression in my opinion is essential to comprise a good vocal performance so i say crack on bend over backwards cartwheel backflip off the stage yeah. <laughs> He's just, he is so, this is so powerful. Like you hear the desperation in his voice. Oh, I'm just so in awe. I'm just a worthless liar. I'm just an imbecile. I will only complicate you. Trust in me and fall as well. Find a center in you. I will chew it up and leave. Trust me, trust me, trust me. This just confirms everything I expected, really. Like, ah, oh, oh my god, he really, ah! Oh. Here's the physical manifestation of his lyrics. He has managed to unlock something in his brain that enables him to just so poetically and accurately depict his experiences. Watching him perform is so spiritual, it's so real. Oh, the distortion in his voice. 
I almost want to say it's tasteful, but it's not tasteful because it, it doesn't sound like it's a choice. It is so raw and it is such a mirroring of his soul to the point where I just think his vocal technique is literally his soul coming out. The desperation and poignancy in that line. Wake up. Why can't we not be sober? We know be Visually seeing this struggle almost as if he's writhing in pain, hopefully not vocal pain, is captivating. He does something where he goes above notes a lot before he comes down on them. His voice is generally more sharp than flat, which is unusual. This sharpness depicts an uneasiness and an edge because as we sing higher, our muscles engage to ensure the vocal cords are sufficiently stretched to achieve that higher note. So this sharpness, you feel him hold on to everything that he's singing. He also does this super cool thing where he modulates a lot of his vowels. two different vowels in one. Boy, it's or an E. And so as singers, we often use naturally occurring diphthongs and exaggerate them to suit like little uh, melodies we wanna do, like the word I, we can perform as I, I, and we don't think we're referring to like an I, I. This style of music could not be replaced for like, you know, pop or soul or jazz or something. You can't get this level of intensity in any other genre. Tool really prove the power of metal. The heavy and very articulate drums, intricate bass lines, distortion in the guitars, distortion in the voice. These things really push and amplify a message of desperation and intensity. And I think that's why a lot of metal and rock songs are about topics such as like freaking hatred and like Satan and shit. I think that really puts people off, but this is not like that. In this instance, we are being moved by a very personal and serious story about addiction and loss in a way that I believe goes beyond comparison. Would we have been as moved by this if it was acoustic guitar and a drum machine and some synth strings. I don't know. Would I be interested in the Ed Sheeran cover of Sober? Yes, I would watch it. I would be very intrigued. Whether you love this genre or not, you really can't deny that this was powerful and moving and genuine. I cannot believe I have not tried harder to go to one of their shows before, but yeah, that is all about to change. Fairy voice mother school trip to go see Tool. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Aww. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know in the comments as it is always my pleasure. Have a wonderful day. I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.